Hello everyone. Last time we have discussed the equation of uh, hydraulic jump. So today we are going to discuss about the classification of hydraulic jump. But this classification is based on uh, tail water depth. Basically, uh, the classification of hydraulic jumps can be done based on uh, two criteria. One is the tail water depth, and second is the initial fraud number. So first, uh, in today's class, we are going to discuss about classification of hydraulic jump based on the tail water depth all right so first we have to understand what is a tail water depth all right so <coughs> let us say so suppose we have a supercritical flow coming from the upstream and how we can do that suppose we have a sluice gate here okay so flow was taking place in this channel so you block that flow by a sluice gate suppose now there is a gate like this okay so flow now you are giving an upstream control basically uh, super critical flows have upstream control upstream control means you can control the flow from the upstream the flow depth is governed by the upstream uh, conditions so now here your uh, flow will start to take place in a super critical regime so this is your y1 okay y1 now uh, tail water depth means suppose in the channel you have some conditions say some barrier in this channel suppose okay in this channel such that your flow depth is this much okay so here the flow depth is y2 suppose okay y2 dash i will call specifically y2 dash okay so this y2 dash the depth of flow which is available in the downstream side is called as the tail water depth so this will become your tail water depth okay now tail water depth depends upon uh, the physical conditions of the channel okay so suppose now here for example i have drawn a overflow structure okay so it is blocking the flow so flow uh, depth is governed by this uh, downstream control section okay so this becomes a control section okay which is controlling the tail water depth similarly there can be other criteria also uh, here there can be no obstruction it is not necessary that you should place an obstruction you should, you can have just a mild slope such that your uh, normal depth of flow is this much okay so that will again give you some kind of tail water depth okay so tail water depth <coughs> depends upon the physical conditions of the channel okay you can just have a stealing basin kind of thing you can um, uh, that can give you some uh, tail water depth so uh, basically this depends upon the conditions of the channel which are existing at the field now uh, based on this tail water depth uh, three type of jumps are possible first is called as the free jump second is called as the repel jump and third is the submerge jump so first we will see what is what we mean by a free jump okay free jump so suppose again now so flow is taking place under super critical condition okay what is the condition for uh, hydraulic jump in the upstream we should have super critical flow okay so that is the primary condition so suppose we have super critical condition here at the upstream because of any reason you can have a sluice gate you can have flow coming on from a spillway this uh, these uh, cases give rise to a super critical flow so suppose you have a super critical flow like this okay this is the channel bottom and uh, now consequently i am drawing the specific force diagram here okay this is the specific force diagram variation of specific force with respect to depth why i am drawing this because we know that uh, the depth both the depths of the hydraulic jump which are called as the sequent depths have the same specific force okay we have seen that so suppose for this q some discharge q is flowing okay for this q 
you have specific force diagram like this suppose okay roughly i have drawn this so it is for suppose q okay now we know that uh, the minimum specific force will occur at a critical condition so at critical depth it will occur so now this is suppose your critical depth line okay yc this particular is your super critical flow so the depth will be less than critical depth fine so suppose this is your depth okay it lies here the specific force is here f1 the incoming specific force will be f1 and uh, the corresponding depth is y1 okay now see uh, when free jump will take place free jump okay see for this particular depth y1 this is your y1 okay what is the sequent depth sequent depth means the depth with same specific force so put this ordinate on this curve in the super critical zone okay so the depth corresponding here will be your so basically this is your sequent depth y2 okay y2. all right basically when hydraulic jump is going to form now when the hydraulic jump is going to occur here the depth of the jump after the after its formation should be how much it should be y2 why because uh, y1 the specific force is f1 and for y2 whatever y2 is going to occur this is suppose y2 okay this is y2 the hydraulic jump that is going to occur the specific force should also be equal to now f f1 should be equal to f2 okay so f1 equal to f2 therefore the depth of hydraulic jump should be exactly equal to y2 okay but uh, now what happens free jump occurs when the depth in the channel is exactly equal to the sequent depth the tail water depth basically is equal to the y2 suppose if this is the case then we get a free jump okay uh, but not necessary see suppose your tail water depth can be either actually it can be less than your y2 dash suppose is the tail water depth it can be either less than sequent depth okay and it can be more than sequent depth also it can be like this also okay both cases are possible okay but suppose your y2 dash is exactly equal to y2 then hydraulic jump will take place from here itself okay so suppose your y2 dash is equal to y2 okay and it is exactly equal not less not more but you have to keep in mind that the tail water depth condition is in your hands or in the uh, it has it depends upon the physical conditions of the channel so it can be less actually it can be more than the sequent depth not necessarily it it is equal to the sequent depth always but suppose it is equal to y2 then what will happen you will get a free jump So suppose your y2 is equal to y2 dash okay and tail water present in the channel is also equal to y2 okay then you will get a free jump a classical free jump which will give you a good amount of energy dissipation a clear jump will uh, take place okay and uh, you will get turbulence also and energy dissipation also will be very good in this kind of free jump okay uh, what is the condition if you want to make a free jump suppose uh, suppose this is a downstream of the spillway and you want that you want to you want a hydraulic jump in this location it, itself okay so then what you have to ensure that whatever depth in in the downstream that you are keeping that depth should be exactly equal to y2 okay then and then itself you are going to get a Uh, hydraulic jump because the depth of hydraulic jump will have same specific force okay so this is the first category that is the free jump it will occur when your y2 dash will be equal to y2 okay y2 dash is for tail water depth y2 is for sequent depth now next we will see what is a repel jump
Okay, this was the first type free jump. Now we'll see what is a repel jump. Okay, it will occur when your tail water depth y2 dash is less than the sequence depth y2. Okay, so uh, let's say suppose again you have supercritical flow occurring downstream of a spillway. Okay. This is your spillway, Ogi spillway. Okay, Ogi spillway flow is taking place like this. Okay, flow is taking place. And uh, now flow is taking place and this supercritical flow, you know that this flow is a supercritical flow, high velocity flow, high velocity, high fraud number flow. This flow can damage the downstream river bed. Okay, so here you can get erosion. To avoid the erosion, you have to dissipate the energy of this uh, flow. So for dissipating this energy, we want to create suppose a hydraulic jump. Okay, and hydraulic jump is one of a very good ways of dissipating energies. Now, suppose what happens is, this is your channel bed, okay, and I am drawing the specific force diagram here, okay. So for this particular Q, whatever Q is flowing, okay, suppose you have a specific depth Y1, okay, here, here you have uh, super critical depth is Y1, okay. Now you, suppose uh, for this particular Q, you draw the specific force diagram okay this is your specific force diagram variation of specific force with respect to the depth okay so now we know that the for hydraulic jump to take place the depth of hydraulic jump after the jump will be sequent depth of y2 okay so plot this y1 on this curve so you will get this uh, f1 here you are going to get y1 Okay, the critical depth is somewhere here. So critical depth line is above this Y1. This is your critical depth line. Okay. Now, for a jump to take place, the tail water depth should be how much equal to? For that, you have to find out the ordinate of this F1 on this curve. Okay, so you are getting, suppose this. This is your Y2. This is your y2 sequent depth y1 and y2 are sequent depths now suppose in this basically there is a structure downstream of this uh, spillway which is called as the stilling basin which ensures that depth in the uh, tail water depth is more or less equal to the uh, sequent depth okay but suppose now your tail water depth is less it is here suppose okay your y2 dash is here it is less than y2 the required depth suppose the tail water condition is such that your depth is not enough it is uh, slightly less then what will happen see hydraulic jump cannot take place because for this particular y1 your hydraulic jump depth sequent depth is y2 but y2 dash is not equal to y2 it is less so what happens the y1 will change the y1 will actually increase the depth of y1 will actually get increased how if you plot this available tail water depth on this curve okay and you bring that on in the supercritical region then you are going to get another depth okay for which basically you are going to get the sequent depth for this y2 y2 dash okay you are going to get that okay so that will be a slightly higher than the y1 this will be your y1 dash it will be slightly greater than y1 why because uh, here we are reducing the sequent depth because it the available sequent depth uh, we don't have that much of the tail water so whatever tail water is available that sequent depth you can achieve so for that sequent depth the the depth in the supercritical region is y1 dash which is greater than the 
earlier Y1. So what happens in the channel, the Y1 slowly changes into Y1 dash. Okay. The depth increases and you are going to get a gradually varied flow profile. Okay. Slowly the depth increases from Y1 to Y1 dash. Okay. Here. Okay. And once you are, your initial depth is Y1 dash. Now your tail water depth is Y2 dash. It is exactly equal to the sequent depth, new sequent depth Y2. Okay. So you are going to get a hydraulic jump in this case. So now from Y1 dash, you are going to get a hydraulic jump up to Y2 dash. Okay. So this is called as a repelled jump. Okay, this is repelled jump. Why? Because the depth, uh, the hydraulic jump could have formed here. But because the tail water depth was not enough, the initial depth goes on slowly increasing. Okay, to the point where this initial depth and the tail water depth are become exactly equal to the sequent depth. Okay, till that point the Y1 will go on increasing. So the depth is actually repelled in the channel. The depth moves further away from the further away actually in the downstream. So this is called as a repelled jump. So it is repelled. Alright, so this is the second type of jump. Now the problem is repelled, uh, with repelled jump is there is one problem. Suppose you are using the uh, hydraulic jump as an energy dissipator. Now uh, suppose for the same case, if you are using it as an energy dissipation uh, mechanism, energy dissipator, what is happening in this case? The jump could have formed here itself. Okay, if your tail water depth was equal to the sequent depth, the jump could have formed at the, just at the base of the spillway. But now it is not happening in that way. The jump is getting repelled in the downstream. Because of this repelled jump, there is extra length of the, of this uh, channel which is exposed to high energy flow. So here there are chances of, basically here there are chances of damage to erosion. Okay, because of the high energy flow. So you will have to provide concrete. Extra concreting is required. So this increases the overall cost of the structure. Energy dissipator structure. So that's why repel jumps are uh, a bit of cause of concern. If you are talking about a repel jump in a, uh, energy, in a energy dissipator. Okay. So this is the second type. Repel jump. Now third uh, type is the. So for repel jump what is the criteria? Your Y2 dash should be less than Y2. Tail order depth should be less than sequent depth. type of jump is the submerged jump. It is also called drowned jump. Okay. Drowned or submerged jump. Okay. Now uh, what is left? Third, only third one condition is left now. That tail water depth, suppose it is greater than the sequent depth. Okay. So suppose now uh, again in a channel you have supercritical flow depth, okay, using a sluice gate, okay, this is a channel bed, so this is your incoming flow depth Y1, okay, and again to check the sequent depth, we have to draw the specific force diagram, so you draw that suppose, this is your specific force diagram, this is your Y1, so for this particular Y1, your sequent depth comes as Y2, suppose, okay, okay, Y2. But what happens now? Now the case is that your available water depth is greater. This Y2 dash is greater. Okay, suppose you have a barrier here. Because of that barrier, the flow has to have this Y2 dash, okay, which is greater than the Y2, okay. Then what happens? Basically what happens in this case, the hydraulic jump is formed initially. Initially, the hydraulic jump will be formed like this, okay, because Y2 is 
available sequence depth is less than the uh, tail water depth it will form it will be formed but it will get drowned finally it will be drowned like this okay so finally it will get drowned like this okay and in the on the surface you will see some some kind of turbulence okay so this depth is a is submerged in this water okay basically so there is a very less uh, aeration which we see in in case of free jump in case of repel jump there is a lot of uh, entrainment of air inside they had inside the uh, liquid phase also so that is less in this uh, hydraulic jump so basically this is the third type where tail water depth y2 dash is greater than the sequent depth okay so these are the three type of uh, hydraulic jumps which we have classified based on the uh, tail water okay free jump repel jump and submerge jump another classification is also there which is based on the uh, incoming uh, frauds number okay so fraud number of the inflow fr1 okay uh, we will see the classification of based on that in the next lecture